What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to build a home theater PC case or an HTPC. I'm starting with an old computer case here. This is the one I bought in 2012 for my video editing. And since then I've upgraded everything. I've still got all the guts, most of the guts anyway, for this one. But basically what I'm looking for here is all these metal parts right here. I'm going to strip the plastic off because when I first started doing this kind of stuff way back, the very first case I made, I made all of the metal parts from sheet metal. You know, the back panel of the motherboard and way too much work. Better to start off with something like this. I'll be putting most of this back in, but I want to get it out of here now so that I can work on the metal without destroying these wires. There isn't a whole lot that I need to do with the main part of this case. I think it's actually the right size. But I do need to get this uh, drive bay out intact. And I need to cut that apart so I can move it. And this is held in with rivets that I'm going to drill out. I didn't spare the rivets in here. Uh, one problem with this uh, drive bay is that it's separate on this side but it's part of the bottom or the side on this side over here so I'm gonna have to cut this out to free it from the case okay that should come right out now and it does I'm only going to use the bottom bay on the five and a quarter and then use the bottom two three and a half for hard drives. I've got a five terabyte one that'll fit in here, plus the system drive, and that's all I should need for this. I'm using the grinder because it makes a clean cut without distorting the metal. But you can try to use a hacksaw for this, or even one of those Dremel Moto tools with the cutting disc. That will do it, it'll just take a lot longer. Speaking of a Dremel, it's about the best thing for grinding off those really sharp burrs that the grinder leaves behind. I've got two things that I need to put back in this now. I've got this drive bay, and I've also got this uh, USB card reader thing. And I'm going to put the drive bay over here on this side. That way it's in front of the power supply, and it's not sticking back over the motherboard that much. And then I'm going to put the card reader out in front here. Well, I don't have a whole lot of metal left on the front here to attach this to, but I think I do have enough. I'm just going to mark spots where I can drill holes in this before I dry the screws. Of course you can use rivets for this, they'll probably work better than the screws. Now that I've got it attached and I'm happy with where it is, I'm going to use the drive that goes in there to mark the metal that I need to cut out. And then I can take that drive bay out again and cut away that metal. I've got the bay put back in and I'm just going to slide the drive in it clears properly and it does and that looks good I've got one other thing I need to do and that's to cut away the metal on the back here so that I can access the screws to mount the drive once it's in all right it's really starting to look like a case now I'm almost done with the metal work I just got to cut the hole in the front here for the USB stuff before I can actually cut the hole, I need to cut out this part that's bulging out. This is for a case fan, and I won't be needing that. Now for this, I want to get the power switch off of here, because I'm not going to be using this one. This is just clipped on there. I am going to be using the wire, though, because it's got the correct connector on the end. And once that's off, I think that this metal shield here will just slip off. Because I don't think I need that either. Yeah, because this is just going to go through the front. Actually, I'm going to put that back on because it actually covers up these ugly looking jacks. I'm going to be mounting this in the wood that's on the front. I'm just going to cut a very neat hole in that and slip this in. And actually use epoxy to glue it in. Because this is a one-shot deal here all the way. So I don't need a neat hole to go through. Just needs to clear on the back. So I think it should line up pretty much with the drive up towards the top of the unit.
what I'm thinking is that I will make a U-shaped piece that covers the sides and the top, and that'll be one piece, and it'll slip down on top, and then I put screws in through the side. Uh, this is something that you would see in a lot of old receivers and stuff. All right, the part's cut out. Now all I need to do is put it together. So that takes care of the sides and the top. I need to work on the front next. And there are two ways of doing this because it is wood and it does have holes in it. I can either very carefully lay out the holes on there and then cut it out with a jigsaw and try to clean that up. I'm not going to do that though. I'm going to cut the front out in strips and that way I'll form the holes as I go through. So you can see how that works. All these pieces fit in and then I'll finish it off with the piece up here like that. All I need to do is glue that all together and I got my holes cut out nice and neat and no messing around with jigsaws. I let the glue dry on all the parts here and as you can see I've got it roughly put in position. This is basically how it's going to look except it's going to be uh, walnut veneer on here. And that's what I need to do next. I also need to get a power switch in here somewhere. And I said I wasn't going to use the power switch that was in the computer. But I think I really don't have a choice because I looked and I can't find a suitable switch among my you know, stuff that I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill like a three quarter inch hole in here. And then I'm going to make a wooden button that will push on that original switch. I drilled in through the front most of the way. And then I switched to a one inch bit and I drilled in from the back. And that creates a little step on the inside. And make it so that it can't actually pop out the front. I glued the power switch right onto a piece of wood. And then I can screw that in place to the chassis centered over the hole. What I've got here is some walnut veneer. I got this a couple of years ago actually from Oakwood Veneers. They sent it out to me to do a project with. And I'm just now getting around to it, my apologies, but I wanted something special to use it on because it is nice stuff. This is uh, black walnut. So I'm gonna cut this to size to go on the U-shaped part. I want the grain to come up the side, across the top, and down continuously. I've cut this much off the bigger piece that I had. Kind of a non-conventional way to do it, but <laughs> it works. And all I'm gonna do is lay it out here. It's kind of curling up really bad because it's been in that tube. I'm just gonna measure it out to the width of the side and then I'll make the cut. I've got my three pieces cut. I mark the edge that lines up with the grain on the other part. And I'm gonna do the sides first. What I'm gonna do, or how I'm gonna do this is use contact cement. There are other ways, but this is probably the fastest and easiest for this kind of work right here. And I'm going to do the same on the piece of veneer here. I'm using just a cheap brush, a throwaway one. But in between jobs, what I do, if there's not too much time in between, that is, I will wrap this up in plastic and that will keep it until I need to use it again. The thing with contact cement is you have to let it dry. I did wind up giving the uh, veneer another coat. And now I'm going to put it on. Guys use sticks and whatever. And that's good for a big piece. But for a small piece like this, I'm just going to position it with a little bit hanging over this end. And then I'll just push it on my fingers like this. Work my way down to the bottom. Like so. After I get it on there, I'll be able to put more pressure on. Now I can trim off the excess. There are several ways to do that as well. I like to take a knife and run the right along the edge like this wherever possible. Now I can move on to the front. When I made the front, I made it oversized. So I just trimmed the ends down to the right length. I've also added these tabs that actually attach it to the chassis. I need to rip a little bit off the top, but I just want to show this right here. I added a spring to the back of the uh, switch 
and that keeps it pushed out against the front like that. So I'm just going to rip that off and then I can start putting the veneer on. I also want to make the profile of it thinner, so I'm going to cut a rabbit on all three sides, the top and the two ends, not on the bottom. And that will reduce the apparent thickness of it. To start with the veneering on the front, I did the edge first, and then I cut out a piece big enough to cover the front. And then I drilled a three quarter inch hole through the veneer for the switch. That's the easiest and cleanest way to make that hole. When I was spreading the contact cement on the front, I covered the switch with masking tape to make sure that no glue got on that or down around it. Just like I did before, I used my knife to trim off the excess and then I gave it a light sanding with my sanding block. Now I'm back to the drill press to drill through those two openings so that I can get in there with a flush trim bit in my small router. The bit doesn't make it right into the corner so I've got a stick here with sandpaper glued on that I'm using to clean it up. Last thing to do with the front is to give it a coat of oil to see how it looks. Unfortunately, when I got it in place with the back part, I didn't like the overall look. I thought that there was too much walnut veneer happening there. So it seems like a travesty, I know, but I wound up painting that. And although I'm not 100% happy with that either, I do like it better than the veneer for this. So after this, there were 101 different things that I had to do to get the case ready for the computer. But those details are pretty tedious to put in a video like this. If you would like more information on those specifics like that, I've got a website article with lots of pictures and there's a link to that in the description.